Coming to DARPA is like grabbing the nose cone of a rocket and holding on for dear life. DARPA's a place where if you don't invent the internet, you only get a B. A DARPA program manager quite literally invents tomorrow. Coming to work every day and being humbled by that. DARPA is not one person or one place. It's a collection of people that are excited about moving technology forward. Hello, and welcome to Voices from DARPA. I'm Amber Corrin, and I'll be your host. Today, we'll be hearing from Dr. Dev Palmer, Adam Knapp, and Dr. Tayana Rosing about the Joint University Microelectronics Program, or JUMP 2.0. The Research and Development Consortium is the latest in a series of programs spanning more than 25 years. While some program elements have changed over time, the overall goal has not, to drive long-range innovations in information and communications technologies. There's an old saying, maybe an African proverb, its exact provenance isn't clear. But it goes something like this. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. DARPA is in the business of going far, so working together is at the heart of the mission. And in a newly launched program in DARPA's Microsystems Technology Office, the Joint University Microelectronics Program 2.0, or JUMP 2.0, partnerships comprise a veritable ecosystem of cooperative research and development. Specifically, JUMP 2.0 aims to work with industry and academia to advance the high-stakes future of next-generation microelectronics, finding sustainable solutions for high-bandwidth energy efficiency, seamless communications at a massive scale, intelligent sensing and data management that illuminates a revolutionary future of artificial intelligence and technology writ large. If all goes according to plan, going together will help Jump 2.0 deliver the technologies of tomorrow that will power everything we do, from how we communicate, to how we defend our nation, to how we might use autonomous vehicles, to how we clean our homes, or rather, how the robots clean our homes for us, maybe. This is actually a very unusual program in that it brings a tight collaboration between multiple centers, multiple PIs across the nation. JUMP 2.0 spans seven research centers, 39 universities, more than 130 faculty members, and at least a dozen commercial and nonprofit organizations. And that's just to start. This is an effort that demonstrates just how seriously the researchers here take collaboration. They're willing to bet everything on it. Many times over, as the 2.0 and Jump 2.0 would indicate. Although that's sort of a misnomer. This is not merely the second round. These efforts actually go back decades and several program iterations. They've advanced research, yielded new capabilities, and even saved lives. Dr. Dev Palmer, Deputy Director of DARPA's Microsystems Technology Office, has been involved in some capacity in essentially all of them. He took over leadership of the JUMP program at DARPA in 2020 and today oversees JUMP 2.0. The first one was the Focus Center Research Program that started about 25 years ago. And it was solidly focused on transistor scaling, which at the time was driven by a common industry document, the International Roadmap for Semiconductors. That program lasted for 15 years because the underlying drive, the underlying motivation for the program did not change over that period of time. But then things did change. The microelectronics community shifted against a backdrop of tremendous technological transformation. At the same time, it was the beginning of the end of Moore's Law, a concept from 1965 that predicted, accurately it turns out, that the number of transistors in a dense integrated circuit, or a microchip, doubles about every two years. Now, for those who may be newer to microelectronics, Transistors are tiny components inside basically all electronics, and they control the flow of electricity. 
sort of like how a water faucet controls water flow. One type of transistor, the FinFET transistor, is used in basically all commercial products today. Your laptop, your car, your tablet, your smartwatch, and so on. Would it surprise you to learn that the FinFET transistor came from one of these DARPA programs? It's true. It's also true that, as Moore's Law predicted, transistor features clearly would soon approach the size of a single atom. This, coupled with broader emerging trends, sent DARPA and their longtime co-leading program partner, the Semiconductor Research Corporation, back to the drawing board. Here's Dr. Palmer again. The reason that they launched a new program at that point was because of the realization that the motivations behind microelectronics research were changing quickly. So we didn't want to establish a center and just have it run forever. We wanted to take another look at the landscape and the environment and the breakthroughs that have happened in the past five years and start a new program periodically. At that point, we reconvened the DARPA Industry Partnership to determine what the new problems were that we needed to attack, and the JUMP program was the result of that discussion. JUMP 2.0 is not really a follow-on program to JUMP other than in name only. The focus changed from the microelectronic scaling and some smaller scale applications of microelectronics to really a new focus at the next level up on the subsystems and modules and maybe even systems that can impact information and communications technology. To say that Jump 2.0's focus is at the next level up is, well, an understatement. If you have a cell phone, you're well aware of the avalanche of capabilities that have emerged just in the last five to ten years. For context, ten years ago, we were just recently acquainted with Siri. If we had iPhones at all, which a lot of people did not, the top smartphone in 2013 was the HTC One. The hope for Jump 2.0 is that the research and development being done under the program will lay the groundwork for innovations of the next decade or even beyond. This is the common thread over the years and programs leading up to and including Jump 2.0. The adaptive, forward-focused nature of this research and development is built on partnership and pioneering. That is a defining element that has never wavered. What Jump and Jump 2.0 and its family of programs do is they dynamically have people who are actually interested, the interested parties, the end customers actually guide and steer that research throughout. So there is a continual interaction between the end customer and the researcher to try to make the two where the two meet halfway typically in terms of what is technically feasible versus what is actually capability relevant. And it's that interaction and having that as a continual part of the actual research process itself that is the real magic of this program. I see Jump 2.0 really providing the base strata of advances for the semiconductor industry 10 years out from now. That's Adam Knapp, the Jump 2.0 program manager for SRC, DARPA's co-leader on Jump 2.0 and its predecessor programs. Like his colleagues at the helm of Jump 2.0 activities, Knapp has monumentally lofty goals for the program, but that's not to say they're unrealistic. In actuality, the goals of Jump 2.0 aren't just very realistic, they are very necessary. And even if you don't know much about semiconductors or microelectronics, chances are you have personally felt some of the urgency around advancing microelectronics. And you've definitely heard about it. Here's Dr. Palmer to help jog your memory. The interruption in the microelectronic supply chain that was caused by COVID raised the awareness of the government on the importance of supporting the microelectronics industry in the U.S., which led to probably the most visible major R&D program in the government right now is the Chips and Science Act. Jump 2.0 is not part of the CHIPS and Science Act, but we are closely coordinated with the people who are planning and executing the activities under the CHIPS Act. Those are primarily focused on reestablishing the capability to build advanced microelectronics nodes in the U.S. and the ability to staff those 
facilities once they're built. Those have 100% government funding. Another difference with Jump 2.0 is that we have significant industry funding through our collaboration with our industry partners. We're also focused less on short-term results and more on what are the next breakthroughs needed once we reestablish our capabilities in microelectronics, where do we go from there? The simplified answer is that now it's time to leapfrog Moore's Law. We have to surmount the two-dimensional microchip limitations that have evolved alongside incredible volumes of data. And with that, a tremendous demand to process and store all of that data. If we don't have some major breakthroughs in the way we build memory technologies in making sensors smarter so that they generate information instead of data and making microelectronics in general much more energy efficient, we're just not going to be able to sustain this path that we're on. What Dr. Palmer is signaling is that it's time for 3D, for stacked chips that use different kinds of materials, and for the new tools to design and test and build the systems that will make all of this our reality. This is the idea behind three-dimensional heterogeneous integration, which involves stacking microchip elements to achieve greater computing capabilities that are beyond anything we can do today. Dr. Palmer has a great mental illustration for how this works. A good analogy is, you know, you build a house in a certain way. If you want to build an apartment building, you don't just stack up houses. You have to think about it in a totally different way. How do you feed electricity to an apartment building that has many floors? How do you handle the water and the cooling and heating? A lot of the same problems emerge when you try to pack a lot of capability into a three-dimensional module. To be clear, those are problems Adam Knapp, the program manager from SRC, fully expects will be solved. 3D heterogeneous integration, or 3DHI, is a fundamental enabler for his Jump 2.0 goals. I would love to see heterogeneous integration go from just being a niche technology to being widely used throughout the industry. That's part of our hope and vision for this program is that the heterogeneous integration part really explodes. I would love to see this program really set leading standards for 6G going forward and kind of defining the technologies used to define the next generation of cellular communications and radio frequency communications that are integrated with semiconductors. In terms of our applications programs benefiting the warfighter, I view that distributed compute detection to distributed compute interaction as being a key product from this program. I would love to see our researchers in those specific centers really push the boundary of what is currently capable and exceed expectations in those areas. Tayana Shiminich rosing whose voice you heard at the beginning of the podcast, today oversees the Processing with Intelligent Storage and Memory, or PRISM, Center at the University of California, San Diego. It's one of the seven research centers under Jump 2.0. At the PRISM Center, she and her team are working toward the revolutionary implications that have come to define Jump efforts. Uh, we're really looking at how to address problems that actually are really prevalent today in trying to analyze big data. So when you analyze big data today, over 90% of the time is spent in moving the data around from storage to memory and memory to processing. And our idea is to instead actually move the computing directly to where the data is. And in order to make that happen, we really need to rethink how the whole system is designed. So this really involves everything from how to program such systems, what compilers should be written, how to architect such systems, and also what new memory and storage devices we should develop and integrate into the future of computing. And our goal is to make future computing systems be at least 100 times faster than they are today. And we're hoping that we're going to get even better results than this. 100 times faster or better. For Dr. Rosing, that figure is quite literally just the start for PRISM. And few people would know better than she does the potential achievements at hand. She has worked on every iteration of what is now the Jump 2.0 program. Here she shares how the program served as a professional lifeline 
and a personal lifeline amid conflict in her family's Croatian hometown. And I have to say, you know, this, this saved our lives. It helped actually also support my family uh, during the war. And it uh, connected me uh, directly to industry. So it allowed me to see what impact my research could have. Oftentimes, you know, for students that are underrepresented in, in engineering, it makes a big difference when they can see that the work they do actually makes a difference in real lives. Dr. Palmer is also optimistic as he takes on this latest program effort to advance U.S. leadership in cutting-edge microelectronics. It's a critical strategic advantage that Jump 2.0's partnerships will help secure. The innovations in next-generation information and communication technologies that come out of Jump 2.0 will strengthen the relationship between defense and commercial industry and make these new capabilities available for DOD systems and platforms of the future. The only way you can do that is by monitoring where industry is today and where the thought leaders in the industry and in the Defense Department think the needs are going to emerge in the future. That's another real benefit of partnering with industry is that they have an unmatched inside view of where the industry plans to go in the future, which really helps pick the best problems to work on that have the highest potential outcome. In the end, the success of Jump 2.0 and the success of its legacy programs that came before all comes down to the emphasis on working together. Or, as that old proverb put it, going farther by going together. It's because of this exciting collaboration that I think we will be able to be successful. Uh, because it's only when we work together within the overall Jump 2.0 program that we can actually deliver on these very ambitious goals. Thank you for listening to Voices from DARPA. For more information about Jump 2.0, visit DARPA.mil and check the show notes for this episode. Special thank you to Tom Shortridge for producing this episode. 